nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Now that we know uh, how the light waves propagate and what they are, what are they made from, and you know, we, uh, we learned a little bit about Maxwell's equations. We learned that this is a mathematical framework for understanding the physics of a propagating uh, electromagnetic wave or a light wave. It comes a question to one's mind, do, do we actually need to solve Maxwell's equations all the time when we are encountered with a problem such as our problem, the blue morpho butterfly wing. In the light, the white light hits its surface. We see the blue color reflecting to our eyes. Do we have to solve all the math, underlying math within Maxwell's equation? Well, yes and no. Yes, because a solver will solve it for you. An electromagnetic simulation tool will, tool will do all the work for you. But all you need to understand well is to define your structure's dimension and all the involved materials, the unit cell of your structure, know how this solver will work. You need also to define your incident wave, its wavelength, its incident angle, its polarization, as you will learn in the tutorial, and then give the electromagnetic simulation tool a command to solve Maxwell's equations for you, applies the boundary conditions, periodic boundary conditions, and do all the work for you to define the parameters, what kind of output you're looking for, and so on. And the tool will produce to you all the results uh, you are looking for. What the tool does actually is it takes Maxwell's equations more seriously and you know, it takes it after a bit of simplification. And if we wanted to know what is going on within the tool, we need to understand a bit about Maxwell's equations. So we mentioned that Maxwell's equations describe, um, or, or it is a collection of uh, equations that has been, has been uh, collected before describing um, previously observed phenomena. Maxwell's equations are four equations relating electric fields and magnetic fields to uh, free charges and uh, currents. The first law in Maxwell's equation is the Gauss's law for electricity. And we read it like this, the divergence of D equals rho. Divergence, what is denoted as this upside down triangle, which is a derivative function in space. And uh, take note that D here is denoted as uh, like this bold non-italic uh, notation because it is a, a vector field that is function of uh, both space and time. So all the bold like um, symbols here denote a function of both uh, time and space and is described as a vector field. So here, the divergence, as I said, is a vectoral field describing the derivative in space, x, y, and z. So the derivative of d, which is the divergence, the electric, sorry, the electric displacement vector is related to a, uh, the free charge enclosed within a surface. In other words, this law describes the flux of electric fields uh, that comes through a closed surface due to enclosed free charge described as rho. And what we need to learn here is the displacement vector as, is, as we mentioned, the flux of the electric field is related to the electric field function by the constituent parameter epsilon. In case of free space, it is called epsilon node, which is the free space electric permittivity. It is a well-known constant. Here is the value, and you can find it everywhere. But for a, an isotropic linear dielectric medium, say glass or you know, um, plastic or any, any transparent material or any material, it has this 
a value epsilon that is different than epsilon node for the free space. There is a, a, like a, a, a relation between epsilon for um, free, uh, free space and epsilon for uh, the medium. So what we need to know or to learn is that epsilon defines the electric permittivity of the medium and is well defined for, for many materials. So this is law number one. Then we come to law number two, two which is Gauss's law for magnetism. We read this as the divergence of B, and B here is the magnetic flux density equals zero. This equation just states the fact that we cannot find a single magnetic pole. If you found a north pole, you can, you should find the south pole. You'd never ever find a, a, a single uh, magnetic pole. So if you take a closed surface, uh, any uh, like like uh, the, the divergence over that surface, inside that surface, you cannot ever find a single uh, a magnetic pole. So divergence of B equals zero. The third law is Faraday's law of induction, which has been uh, used for many applications in generating power and so on. We read this law as curl, so in this case, this operator with a cross product is called curl or rotation of E, electric field, is equal to minus variation of B with time. In other words, rotating electric fields, which means varying in space, are related to changing magnetic fields in time. Rotating electric fields related to time varying magnetic fields. And the fourth law, Ampere's law, is the other way around. Curl H equals J, which is a, uh, the current, uh, the electric current, plus um, variation of the displacement vector with, with time. In other words, rotating magnetic fields are related to time-varying displacement currents, uh, D or J. So, in other words, time-varying electric fields give rise to rotating magnetic field. And we need to learn this constituent relation that relates the a magnetic flux density to the magnetic field B to H, B equals mu node H, and we call mu node free space magnetic permeability that describes the magnetic properties of a medium. For all the media we know, like electrics, for example, they, most of them will have mu equals mu node, unless in special cases. Uh, but for magnetized materials such as iron or nickel or other materials, mu has another uh, different value than mu mode. So what we learn from Maxwell's equation is that wherever you have time varying electric field, you will have rotating magnetic field. And because rotating magnetic field is time varying as well, it will give rise to time varying electric field and so on and so forth, time varying E, time varying H, and so on, which gives rise to our electromagnetic wave, 